tuning in some music here in the old tube shop radio. It was down for a while, but it's back up and running. And in this week's video, we're going to see how I fixed it and learn a little bit about vacuum tubes. Let's talk about vacuum tubes for just a minute. I grew up with some devices that had vacuum tubes in them in the 60s and into the 70s and then pretty much the transistor replaced them. Vacuum tubes came out of research done on the Edison light bulb which is a filament in a vacuum inside of a glass chamber. The vacuum is there so that there's no oxygen and the filament doesn't burn up. Well a vacuum tube is similar. There are leads on the bottom that you can connect wires to. They go into the glass tube. The glass tube has a vacuum on it, so there's no air in there. There's nothing in there. In fact, see that little dot right there, that little dark dot? That is from this little piece of metal right here that's called the getter. And after the vacuum is pulled on it to eliminate any remaining molecules of oxygen that may be in there, a voltage is applied to the getter and it burns up and gets rid of all the uh, molecules that may be left over that are oxygen. And that little bit of uh, dark spot you see is what's left of some of this metal that burned off. Anyway, a vacuum tube is basically two elements in its simplest form, a cathode and an anode. The cathode is the part that you see glowing when you wait for a vacuum tube to warm up. Well that warmth is key because that's the cathode and it gets hot and when it does it emits electrons. It's called a thermonic emission. Surrounding the cathode is the anode that's known as the plate and voltage will flow from the cathode to the anode but not in reverse direction so it serves as a diode simple tubes in their early form were nothing more than diodes. This one is a dual diode. It's a rectifier tube. It's a great big rectifier tube used in television sets. Here I have a very simple uh, tube that's just nothing more than a single diode. It has a plate around it. You can see the metal right there. And in the very middle is a filament and it will glow red hot when it's powered up. So, we have that function about them. Well, later on, it was discovered that if you put a third element in there called a grid that went between the cathode and the anode, if you applied a voltage to that grid, you could control how much current flowed from the cathode to the anode. It's kind of like the base on a, uh, on a transistor. When you apply voltage to the base, you allow current to flow between the collector and the emitter. This is a 12AX7 uh, dual triode. So that, that tube I just described is a triode tube. It's a cathode in the middle, a plate around the outside, and in between is the grid. You apply a voltage to the grid, either positive or negative, and you can affect how much voltage flows between the cathode and the anode and guess what that voltage will be amplified so in this one being a dual triode it's a class A amplifier so one side of our diode so to speak will handle the positive voltage the other one handles the negative voltage of the waveform so that's how tubes work essentially uh, they're basically diodes in various configurations with a grid or not so let's get that radio fixed now, shall we? Uh-oh, the old Zenith tube AM FM radio is doing nothing but humming. Hmm, could be a bad filter capacitor somewhere, maybe? You know what? This may be a great opportunity to use my vintage capacitor checker to test out the capacitors in this vintage radio. Yep, that's this week's project. Let's troubleshoot this old tube radio and see if we can get the buzz to go away and the music to come back. Well, here it is, and uh, here's the back. And a lot of these old radios are the same in that there's no screws in the back. There's just a simple uh, cardboard panel that clips in with the plastic. Of course, before I go any further, I'll point out this is unplugged. Always, always, always unplug stuff when you work on it. Never work on it plugged in. 
unless you're doing something where you have to test it live, but then if you do so, be really, really careful because some of this stuff can shock the living hell out of you, and that wouldn't be any fun at all. Well, there it is. There's the, uh, there's the guts. There's the inside. There's everything right there. Power disconnected. This is where the power goes in. Right behind that plug is the main filter capacitor. Kind of hard to see here, but it's one of those kind that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the tube was a little warm there, made me jump. It's one of these kind that's encased in plastic, so it's probably okay. Um, usually the old paper wound capacitors go bad. So one side goes to ground, and the other side is right here on the uh, main input. So let's connect that one to the ground side, and we'll connect this one to the other side. And I think you might be able to see the little... Uh, magic eye there goes closed which means the capacitor is good see it go closed okay so it's probably not the filter capacitor like I thought it might be so let's move on and uh, figure out what's next to do that I am going to need to plug this thing in and so we need to be really careful when we do this uh, I started doing junk like this when uh, I was about 13 years old and I've always had a great respect for electricity and I think my mom always knew that because uh, she was the one that ultimately uh, made the decision whether or not I could play around with electronics for some reason. Uh, my dad wasn't too involved with that. I, you know, Other things sure like hunting and fishing but not playing with electronics so I've got the knob turned on in the front. And uh, let's plug this in right now. I've got a cable here from another device that should fit on there. And in a minute or two, I should uh, see some tubes warming up. should see the heaters coming on. There we go. So, uh, one test you can do, and again, be super, super, super careful doing stuff like this. Don't be reaching underneath where all of the electronics are and where all of that open wiring is. I've got a screwdriver here. I'm going to hang on to it by the handle, not by the metal. Don't touch the metal. And uh, always keep one hand behind you when you're doing stuff like this. That's a good rule of thumb. And just, I'm just going to tap on the top of every one of these tubes. I'm going to go poking around with the screwdriver into places I shouldn't be. Very carefully tap the top of the tubes and be really careful where the screwdriver goes. Of course, if you've got something insulated to do this with, that's even better. Oh, that one's okay, but that's a little weird. Okay, looks like we might have a bad tube socket. All right, so let's uh, kill the power, get it unplugged, let the tube cool down a bit, and we're going to pull that tube out of there and take a look at the socket and see what's going on. There's a chance that there's just simply a poor connection at that tube, and we could possibly just fix that up by doing a little bit of cleaning. Okay, that's cooled down a bit now, and uh, again, no power connected. See this? No power. Nothing connected. And this is not a uh, device that is super high power, like audio amplifiers for guitars and such. And there's probably not any capacitors in here that can uh, potentially kill me. So I'll reach in here very carefully, pull out this tube. Just kind of wiggle it around and see what it looks like. Hmm. You see that bit of corrosion that's on there? Just kind of a weird funk. So uh, I'm going to clean those off a little bit with some sandpaper, a little wire brush. And uh, then I'll take a look at the socket, see what kind of condition that's in. Got a little strip of sandpaper here. And I'll just go around the outside of the tube uh, pins to start with. Just give them a little rub till they look shiny. You don't have to go too crazy. 
Okay, that's already a big improvement. Now let's take this and fold it in half, like that. Finger healing up there from the uh, injury last week. <laughs> it's doing okay. Now let's just uh, take that folded part and we'll put it right over one side of one of the pins and just pull a little bit. And that'll take care of cleaning the inside part of the pin. Doesn't take too much, just a little bit. This oxidation is pretty common on uh, a lot of this older electronic stuff. Uh, if you watched the uh, vintage electronics video, you saw how I fixed the uh, rotary switch on the old shortwave radio and suddenly that worked again. So, there we go. Now the, uh, the pins are all nice and clean. Now let's take a look at that uh, tube socket. There's that tube socket right in there. That's pretty tough to get at. So now that I've got the tube pins cleaned up really well, I think what I'm going to do is just try uh, putting the tube back in and using the uh, little bit of roughness that I imparted upon those pins with the sandpaper and maybe that will clean off the socket. So I'm just going to push this in the socket, wiggle it around a little bit, move it up and down a little. Just do that a few times and then we'll plug everything back in and give it a try again and see if we have any better results. Well after all that cleaning it turns out that uh, that tube wasn't really at the heart of the problem. I, I plugged it back in, tapped on it, and it wasn't scratchy anymore. That's good. But as it turned out, it was another tube that was bad. So I just went through and started pulling out tubes and swapping them out with uh, tubes from another radio that I have here. I don't have a tube tester, of course. Um, it used to be that you could run down to your grocery store. Believe it or not, when I was a kid, I remember that the grocery store had a tube tester. You could take a tube in and plug it into the proper socket, push a button, and a little meter would tell you if the tube was good or bad. And uh, a lot of people did their own repairs on electronics. Isn't that amazing? They actually fixed things instead of throwing them away. But I digress. So I started swapping out tubes, and I knew what these tubes are quickly by simply looking at the bottom of the radio where I have a listing of every one of the tubes and the numbers in them. And the bottom of this radio, which is also a Zenith, has the same listing here. So I worked my way through and as it turned out, right here, this tube, which is a 12BA6, and that is a pentode, and it's for the uh, RFIF stage. It has to do with the uh, the reception of radio signals. I replaced it and I plugged it in and uh, it turns out that that was the one that was bad. I haven't tried tuning any stations yet but I did get static a minute ago when I tested it out so let's let it warm up again and uh, we'll see what we can get. Let's see if we can get an FM station here. Carefully uh, turn it on its side Well, there's a little bit of one. I need an antenna. Switch is a bit dirty there. Still doesn't sound quite right, but we're we're getting there. You guys named Chris Show. Well, I'm following on my Twitter this morning, and Nicole Ferguson. So, uh, there you go. There's a uh, basic idea. How to troubleshoot vacuum tube stuff. So I'm going to go through here and uh, see what else might be wrong in some of these other tubes. And eventually get this thing working again because it was uh, kind of a nice radio to have in the shop.
It's been in a few videos. I used it in the FM transmitter bug video. And it's got a really cool sound. So hopefully I can get it working again. So if you get into the back of any of this stuff, again, be very, very, very careful. And if you're working on any big audio amplifiers with great big transformers, you want to be really careful with those. There's upwards of 300 volts floating around in there. They can kill you. Electricity can kill you, and it can also serve you well if you treat it with respect. Well, it's working good again, and I've got some music to listen to here in the shop. So I hope you learned a little bit about vacuum tubes and how they work. And you know a little bit of the history now of electronics beyond just a microcontroller. How about that? Until next time, keep on hacking.